Hello everyone and a happy manga Monday to you. Welcome back and if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, welcome. My name is Zoe and this is my channel Ms. Manga where I talk a lot about, you guessed it, manga. And today I'm going to be talking about some LGBTQ plus reads that I've read so far in the month of June because y'all June is Pride Month so happy Pride and before I get into the manga I just want to like turn a little serious and just give a moment to the community in which I'm making this video about because I think it's really important, especially with a lot of laws and policies that have been being passed in, I'm talking specifically the United States, that is really targeting and hurting members of the LGBTQ plus community, specifically in red states and especially seem to be targeted towards the transgender members of society and i just want to say like you know putting it out there that like any little act of of love compassion support that you can give to the community not just in the month of june you know but because it's pride month i just want to put it out in this video and you know, whether you have the money to maybe make a donation or if you can donate some of your time and, you know, support to your local, you know, um, organizations that are trying to help the LGBTQ plus community. And, you know, even just, you know, going out to your closest um, pride parade or, you know, pride, um, events that are going on just to show your support and be there for these people that are being targeted sadly and being put in more and more danger because of the really unjust laws that are being put into place so yeah any amount of support you can give to the lgbtq plus community would be very beneficial and yeah i just think it's important you know while pride is all about love is love it's also there's also a very real problem going on in the united states right now that is trying to take away the rights and privileges of these human beings and so i just wanted to you know concentrate and and give a little you know spiel about that more serious part of pride month and what's been going on recently and yeah so thanks for listening if you listened and i just think it's really important to mention the realities of life and you know before diving straight into fiction <laughs> okay first up in my lgbtq plus reads is love the answer so this is a one-shot poignant coming of age story about a young woman coming into her own as she discovers her identity as aromantic asexual so yeah our main protagonist chica has always felt a little bit odd and left out because all of the people she's known growing up have all been you know, interested and in talk about intimate physical things shared between romantic partners, we'll say. <laughs> Just like skirting around it. And uh, yeah, she's never been interested. You know, she doesn't really want to hold hands even with um, a guy or, you know, make that step towards physical intimacy. And so she kind of feels like an alien, she even calls herself. And when she gets to college in Tokyo, she, you know, is in a bigger city and there's more people there to meet and talk to. And so she finally begins like to have friends, a, you know, so-called like 
you know, one of those found family situations and where she feels comfortable and accepted for who she is. And I just like, yeah, it's just a really like sweet, heartwarming story about figuring out your identity, finding yourself, being comfortable in your own skin. One of those stories. And um, yeah, I mean, I really loved it. The one shot itself was really good and engaging and all the characters were quite likable in that Chica meets and Chica herself is quite likable. So yeah, I really recommend this one shot to check out. Next up, I read Ogie's Summer Break and this is a young love first time relationship story between Ogi who likes dressing a little bit more effeminately he you know paints his nails he wears some skirts or you know a dress or something and togo who is visually impaired and this is just the journey of their friendship that turns into a relationship because of a mutual interest you know enjoyment of spending time together but issues you know are evident in this relationship from the get-go there's questioning of their reasons for entering into this relationship and just in general dealing with the worries and anxiety of being in your first relationship and this is a sort of trial relationship for just the summer so Ogi doesn't want to fall too deep or or get too entangled with Togo and keep a distance but he also is interested in Togo in a romantic way so it complicates things and yeah I thought it was a pretty promising first volume and I think both characters were interesting and got the start of developing their characters and also their relationship and interactions between the two of them but i'm definitely excited to read volume two when it comes out and see how i feel about the short series as a whole because i just feel like right now it's it's missing too much for me to like completely fall in love with this first volume but i'm very much excited to see where the story goes in the second one next up is one of my absolute favorite just an adorable standalone boys love read and that is snow fairy i actually already read this online like a year or so ago i think and i was super excited when it was published and i reread it this month so i figured that was okay i can still add it to this list because it's so cute and everybody i just i think everybody should read it because i cannot stop gushing about how adorable these boys are <laughs> so our story takes place when wildlife photographer Narumi has journeyed up into Hokkaido during winter to try and take a picture of the elusive snow fairy but he ran into an issue with his lodging and that's when he comes across a local by the name of Haruki and Haruki is just so kind that he you know would be troubled with this tourist you know being out in the cold and not having a place to lodge so he offers him to stay at his house while he tries to photograph these snow fairies he's looking for and it's just so cute of them you know getting closer learning more about each other the usual and even though it's you know just a, a small little one shot their relationship progression is just so perfect and flawless to me i have no complaints i think they're fleshed out beautifully i love both individually and as a couple like and it's just it's super sweet and wholesome too totally family friendly rated pg if you will like there's just a little a little smooch nothing more really and very much innocent but you can tell it's you know the beginning of their relationship and it's just you know that sweet butterflies adorable feelings that you know come in the beginning of a new relationship and it's just so fresh and beautiful and they help you know kind of heal the little pieces of themselves which i always love you know and it's just a really 
solid, adorable read with great art. I mean, yeah, the boys are so cute. <laughs> I can't gush about them enough. <laughs> Last up for the boys romances, we have My Love Mix Up. And I hesitated in including it because I was trying to pick ones that were not so much written for girls. So if you don't know, there's a bit of a stigma with like yaoi titles that a lot of them are written by women and are more so read by women. And it can be hypocritical, can, especially in Japan, I think that women will consume yaoi, but then be disgusted by actual male relationships, like actual gay relationships, which is just, so yeah, I agree, hypocritical. And I didn't include any yaoi personally, even though I love some of the titles are, are actually like so great, but I didn't want to include any for that. And this is not a yaoi, but it is a shoujo bee title. And shoujo bee, if you don't know, or shoujo in general, is more so targeted towards young girls. But where I see the difference in this is that this is very wholesome, very much a sweet, innocent first love story in the vein of other shoujo reads. And it's so very casually talking about a boy having a crush on a fellow classmate. It happens to be a boy. So I think it's actually very positive, hopefully. I, I would like to think the impact of this would be very positive, that it makes a gay relationship or a prospect of a gay relationship anyway, more casual and like, duh, that's normal like that's fine that's just the same as the hetero relationships in shoujo like it looks the same it is the same like you know what i mean <laughs> i don't know if i'm getting my point across or if i'm just babbling so anyway let's talk about my love mix up and this is so cute i've read two volumes now and i'm in love with aoki our main protagonist he is just so cute and his emotions and just like uh how he takes everything to heart and i just want to hug him and just uh. but yeah <laughs> anyway this is a sweet bubbly new romance that basically starts in a typical enough fashion where a guy aoki has a crush on the girl that sits next to him and one day he forgets his eraser and she lets him borrow it. Upon borrowing it, he happens to see the name on the eraser, which is a Japanese kind of, I don't know if it's like a superstition or tradition or whatever you'd call it, but if like you write the name of your crush on an eraser and then use it all up, your crush will come true. I think that's what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But um, so he sees that the name on the eraser is Ida who is the name of the boy sitting in front of him. And of course, <laughs> in typical shoujo fashion, he drops the eraser right in front of Ida, who then sees his name on said eraser, leading to the mix-up because he promises the girl he has a crush on, he won't reveal her secret. And so he kind of makes it seem like, by claiming the eraser is his, that he has a crush on Ida. This leads to some interesting moments and because of this mix-up Aoki and Ida are kind of noticing each other more and the more uh, care and just kindness that Ida shows Aoki the more Aoki begins to realize he actually has a crush on Ida for real this time so it's just like I love it like it's I'm not gonna like, you know, say that this is like some bi representation that uh, Aoki is bisexual because he had a crush on the girl and then a guy because, you know, it's not stated and we don't, you know, know enough about uh, the fictional character himself, whether, you know, this is how he identifies. But from an outsider's perspective, it's giving me by representation and i just love that because i feel like that is sorely lacking in a lot of areas of media and sometimes overlooked in general and you know who's not i just love him and i love how 
open he is with his feelings and how accepting he is about his own feelings that you know i was crushing on a girl now i'm crushing on a guy and that's okay <laughs> and i just love that moving over to yuri romance we have yuri is my job so i've been eyeing this title for a while and finally got around to picking it up and although i did see some um, comments from people online saying that they didn't feel like it was leaning like good enough into Yuri and it wasn't like explicitly Yuri to, to them. I, I would almost disagree. Granted, I've only read two volumes, so I might feel differently if I keep reading the series. But for the beginning of a series, it just feels kind of like a slow burn romance. Like I, it's, it's, a story that begins with our main protagonist Hime who has always been told how cute she is, how angelic, and she's really leaning into that cute persona and wants to be liked by everyone and has this like secret desire to marry rich. <laughs> anyway, Hime ends up injuring a girl who then kind of makes her cover for her at her job and that job is working at a maid cafe in which the maids all kind of act uh as if they are part of a all girls academy taking place in somewhere in europe and there's a definite yuri undertone feels very explicitly yuri uh like a yuri cafe i mean does say in the title yuri is my job so she kind of has to play into her act of being sweet and likable and nice and she meets this girl at her job who in the cafe seems really sweet and helpful towards Hime but outside of the cafe is acting really cold and sternly towards her so Hime is getting this mixed impression she's confused she doesn't know why this girl doesn't like her and it kind of sparks an interest and then the <laughs> First volume ends in kind of a cliffhanger moment. So I quickly bought the second book online and read it. And it, I don't know, like I, I, I get a lot of Yuri vibes from it. I think these two are so cute. And like, I definitely enjoy a slow burn romance. I like the anticipation of characters realizing their feelings or, you know, admitting those feelings. I'm looking forward to more interactions between them personally. I think they have a really great dynamic and moments together and I'm rooting for them. I'm shipping them hard. Like I like them so much. They're so cute. And especially when we get into like the second volume and we get some more background and stuff. It's just, I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. It is definitely slow burn. I get the feeling that we're going to be waiting a while for any development on romantic feelings but at the same time it's okay because they're so cute <laughs> and my last read we're going a little bit more serious it had a very much more serious tone to it and that was the first volume of last gender when we are nameless and this kind of gave me similar vibes to our dreams at dusk and love me for who i am where this is a story that focuses on a large cast of characters and their individual and personal struggles as members of the LGBTQ plus community. There is an aromantic character, a bi transgender character, um, a pansexual character, and they also touch on um, a character who falls under the X gender, which is a term that Japan uses that kind of is similar to what the US calls non-binary people. Um, but it's like more encompassing. It can be you don't identify as either man or woman, or it can be where you feel you are on a spectrum of like both man and woman. This character, for instance, that we meet in Last Gender feels that they are, I believe it's 70% male and then 30% female. So they will go to the Bar California, which is the setting um, where we meet all these different 
characters and members of the LGBTQ plus community. And they have the freedom and the safety at this bar to dress in a feminine way and present as female while at the bar to just, you know, express that female side of their identity. And so, yeah, I just thought it was really great how it touches on so many different members of the community and it takes a really like deep and heartfelt look at their struggles and their characters, you know, as a whole. This is the only title in this group that is rated 18 plus. Um, so just be aware of that for any possible younger viewers of this channel. I don't know if there are any, but yeah, if you're younger, this, but yeah, this does have some explicit scenes in it and I do feel like it's handled respectfully and in a way that lends itself to the story, if that makes sense. It's definitely more mature though, so just be aware of that going forward. Otherwise, I am getting similar vibes to those other two short LGBTQ plus series I mentioned before. And I ended up finding out that it's complete at three volumes. So I bought volume two and volume three. So they're on their way to me currently, but I don't have them yet. So I can't tell you how I feel about the series as a whole, but I did really enjoy the first volume. So yeah, those were my LGBTQ plus reads of in the month of June. I have read a couple more, but I just really wanted to focus on these. I thought they gave a good variety of different types of stories you might see out there and what they're about and you know maybe help you decide which ones you want to pick up and as always if you like this video please hit that little thumbs up button engagement is awesome and if you would be so kind as to leave a comment of what LGBTQ plus books uh, you are currently reading or have read this Pride Month or plan to read or what LGBTQ plus books are your personal favorite reads. You know, I'd love to hear it all. And if you haven't already, if you'd be so kind as to subscribe, it would mean so much to me. And with that, have a happy and safe Pride Month. And until next time, bye!